Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Elemental Maker. Oh, well that's annoying, isn't it? Damn microphone clip thingy. This is gonna take some getting used to filming. <laughs> All right, I <laughs> thought I got that sorted out. Today, you guys uh, probably saw this in the last video on the main channel. I used it to sterilize or pressure sterilize, AKA autoclave, that sort of thing, steam heat. Uh, of a couple grain jars that I would use to make mushroom grain spawn. Today, what I want to do is upgrade the old steam uh, pressure control device here. So, as this thing is currently set up, basically, you uh, have it cracked open. It's literally just, just a little uh, needle valve. <laughs> that's, that's what the whole thing is. Unbelievable. So, you uh, you let the thing get to a bit of a boil, you start seeing steam come out, and then you just clamp her down, lower your uh, heat, and wait till it gets to the correct area. If you start building up too much pressure, you gotta crack it open, let some pressure bleed off, close it up, and adjust your heat. Your, your whole pressure adjustment ideally should be your heat source. Obviously, if you're doing it outside on a windy day, that's going to be a lot, lot harder to control your heat. So, I bought one of the modern uh, units that they use on the All-American canners. Now, I believe this old unit, or I formally believed it was an All-American. The more I look into it, the more I believe this might have been a national brand. So, this was either an All-American or a national. Not, not quite sure which. But I want to upgrade it. Um, nice thing is the, the dial still works perfectly fine. It's a little sketchy trusting a dial that old, but I have pressure tested it and it was in accordance. It was within a couple PSI of both the gauges I tested it with. Other nice thing is the emergency valve does work. That pops at about 25 PSI, I think it was. Um, that being said, I still want to be able to just kind of set it and forget it with this thing. Uh, <laughs> as it is, I have to, uh, literally I set a timer on my phone. I get it to a nice steady point, make sure it sits there a few minutes. And then I come back and I check it every five minutes. It gets kind of old when you're pressure canning something for 90 minutes or in the case of, uh, fruiting blocks, two hours. So that that's, that's a lot of work. What I want to do is upgrade it to a much more modern, uh, system where I don't have to worry about it quite as much so we're gonna see if we can't remove this old needle valve and install the nice new unit I got Ooh, now that it's broken it's a pretty cool bit of technology they bake into these too I, I really like the science behind them it's a, a super simple yet ingenious solution to uh, to pressures The other nice feature is it has a vent that's much harder to block. This one, just a hole going straight up. If something were to get in there, could block it off. You could uh, potentially have some sort of failure in that manner. This seems like a much more secure design because you have a vent hole going straight through. You have entrances on the sides as well drilled in. And you have a slot baked into there. So it is a much more... Wow, that focus is pretty nice, huh? It's a much more fail-proof design, in my opinion. Just from a quick glance, it looks like the threads are correct, so that's a good sign. Let me uh, get a little more close up there, show you guys what I love so much about this All-American pressure canner system. Really, really slick. Also, trying a different setting on this uh, new camera. Let me know what you think of the picture. Uh, a lot of guys said to film in the vivid and I can't film in auto because then I can't adjust the mic levels and they get totally screwed up. Uh, I don't know about this new, uh, new camera too much, but it, it does seem better than what I was using before. So I guess anything's an upgrade over a 15 year old camera. Now here we have a beautiful bit of technology, just super, super simple sciencing, but it's, ingenious and I love it. 
<laughs> so this is how you control the pressure of this canner now. So this will sit and be at whatever pressure the inside of the pot is. And depending on which hole you have selected here, it'll um, <clears throat> release the pressure at that set hole. So we have five, or five, 10, and 15. So five pounds, 10 pounds, and 15 pounds of pressure. The question is, <laughs> uh, it initially confused me a little bit because I thought, how the hell are they doing that with just a standard uniform weight? Obviously, you have, uh, you know, your, your force over area. You have gravity pulling this down. This is a set weight. How are they varying the pressure? And it's an ingenious, slick little trick they used. Uh, kind of, once you see it, it, it seems stupid. But, <laughs> but they have different hole sizes here, which are resting on a conical surface so for each one of these despite the weight staying the same you're getting a different surface area that that pressure is acting on so it's a really really ingenious super simple little system and i really hope it fits my pot <laughs> all right so first step is obviously removing the old one so this old ice pickle fitter nope I don't want to destroy it because I love vintage shit. It's a bit of history to destroy there. I'm not too keen on wrapping up that history. Let me go get my numbered bit set. <laughs> as you can see, I also use my <laughs> drill storage as temporary 18650 storage. All right. Hopefully this one will fit. Here we go. And maybe I can... <sighs> Give that a little twerking. Hmm. Where do I have that can span that safely? <laughs> this is a, apparently a vintage episode. Breaking out all the old shit. Hopefully that'll kind of get both sides simultaneously. Make a nice even. <sighs> nope. Well, there goes my 330 second drill bit. Gonna need something less hard. A little number eight looks about right. Ooh, that may give us just the chance we need. Now how the, oh shit, this is great. Put the uh, butt of the little drill piece left in there. Oh, got it. Oh, oh. all right, we got it's starting to unthread. These threads have not moved in at least 60 years. So I'll tell you what, that's actually kind of impressive that uh, that's all it took. Of course it's aluminum, so it's really not gonna corrode like steel, but still. It's a long time for threads to be sitting idle. Wow, all right, there it is. But fingers crossed, let's hope the threads match up. They appear to be the same. Ho, ho, ho. Guys, how fucking lucky is that? Look at that. It's a perfect match. <laughs> nice. Easy upgrade. Beautiful. Oh. Can't beat it when shit works out the right way. And didn't even damage the old one. We can uh, keep that. 
for future use. And uh, I guess I'm going to use some sort of thread locker. Maybe some of the green stuff, the really light stuff, but it, I know it works in vacuum environments. I don't know about higher temperature stuff, but 250 really isn't that high. All right, so we got a match. This will certainly work. What I'm going to do now, I got a little Loctite 290. It's not, not specced for aluminum, uh, but I'm not really looking for a bond here. I'm literally just looking to seal it. This is also the wicking grade, so... Technically, I don't even really have to uh, I Might put a little bit on the threads there It doesn't seem to wick as well as as I would have thought. Oh son of gun That is indeed low viscosity. Let me get a Toya Papele. Wow, that's a good guess So let's see how far the stick out is on this thing That's pretty so weak Sticks out into there. Pretty good ways. Won't ever have to worry about that getting blocked. That's a, that's a real nice kind of safety feature. I've been very scared to actually pressure sterilize uh, fruiting blocks. Even though in theory I could do it no problem. I, I know right where the stove sits. But my fear was that if, uh, if I covered up that hole... Uh, I mean, I could theoretically take it off the stove and it would decrease in pressure, actually eventually probably creating a vacuum. Uh, but at the same time, ha having this is just a nice, nice upgrade. I mean, who can beat that? Uh, I now have a modern all-American pressure canner with all the joy of the vintage. Put a little bit of the thread locker there. That is the wicking grade, so that'll slip in there pretty nicely, seal it up. Beautiful. We are fully upgraded. Here we are in the kitchen. She's coming up to temperature, up to pressure. <laughs> you can see she sprung a little leak over there. I uh, probably didn't tighten it down super evenly. I was kind of doing this in a rush. A bit sloppy with my work. Very rare for me. I'm usually quite meticulous as you guys know. <laughs> but she should do a little jiggle and dance once we hit uh, right around 15 psi. It's probably like plus minus two somewhere in there. Getting there. Looks like we're at maybe 17 PSI So it's pretty damn close and There we go. She's ringing <laughs> Isn't that cool That is a sweet setup So it now has its own pressure regulator. I don't, I mean, obviously I'm still going to babysit it, but I'm not going to have to be quite as OCD about it as I was uh, previously. I can actually kind of relax a little bit and know it's not going to drastically shoot over pressure and, and blow up. We also, of course, still have the original uh, over pressure release there. Not too bad, I'm a fan. <laughs> Me gusta mucho. Well guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Maybe uh, maybe you can use something like this in the future if you're you know into engineering and that sort of stuff. That's definitely an idea that uh, you can put to use. I, I love that. Simplicity at its finest. And <laughs> if you think of any cool ideas we can do with this uh, outside of the mushroom hobby or, or canning, uh, let me know. Preferably things that won't destroy this beautiful old pressure pot, but uh, let me know. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you next time. Have a great one.